miles and miles of harness tape. Hey guys, welcome back to Bad Luck Garage. So, how to start this off? Okay guys, on the live feed the other day, I was telling you that I had some footage of, you know, the, the wire and harness going in. I had some footage of, of me cussing and screaming about the wire harness. Uh, it really wasn't a complete video though, because, uh, you know, we were just trying to get it done. So I, I, didn't, I didn't record every little step of the process. But it has also occurred to me that I have not put a video out in almost three weeks. So I kind of feel like uh, I need to get something out there. And at the same time, I was thinking to myself, you know, it may not be the greatest video, but uh, you know, you, some of you guys might want to actually see what we went through putting the harness in. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to take all the footage that I have and kind of edit it. Uh, you know, cut it down and try to make a halfway watchable video for you guys to kind of show you uh, just putting the wiring, uh, the wiring harness in and where we mounted the PCM, etc. So keep that in mind when you're watching this, what you're actually seeing is a, basically a bunch of scraps put together uh, just to kind of show you guys how we went about doing this. But it should still be watchable and uh, you know, kind of keep you guys in the loop as to what's going on and hopefully hold you over for a day or two uh, until the next video comes out. So here it is, guys. Take it for what it's worth. <laughs> Hope you enjoy. Just to kind of show you what we're looking at here, this grommet right here actually represents the firewall of the car back here. So everything on this side of the grommet, all this is going to be inside the car. That includes our fuse slash relay block. Um, this is our harness that goes to our tack module for our drive-by-wire pedal. Of course, you know, these are the PCM plugs. Uh, here's our OBD2 plug. We have a chassis ground, which is, you know, basically all these grounds tied together into this one ground. And then all of these wires, this bundle here, actually goes over to the gauges, you know, tax signal, VSS signal, uh, yeah, et cetera. So that all goes that way. So this is, uh, <laughs> this is gonna be quite a handful, I think, to fit under the dash along with the PCM. Now, this side of the harness starts right here. What we have is we have two constant hots right here that are going to go to our battery, or which actually what they'll do is they'll go down to the starter. That's why they're on the same leg as the crank sensor. And we have our passenger side O2 sensor, um, our map sensor, which honestly, it, some of the stuff on this harness is just weird, guys, because like they've got the map sensor run out way up here in between the fuel injectors for cylinders six and eight when they could have just brought it out back here and because of something i'm about to show you i'm about to have to untape this whole fucking harness anyway so when i do that that's probably what i'll do i'll probably bring this wire and since it's so long i'll fold it back inside the harness and I'll pop it out right here where it should have been in the first place because the map sensor is, well, right freaking here. Then here's our throttle body, uh, throttle body connector for drive-by wire, you know, fuel injectors, two, four, six, eight, uh, coil pack harness. On the other side, we have our cam, the cam position sensor, which, you know, it's gonna be back here as well um sorry guys i'm i'm like the way this thing is laid out is really fucking with me <laughs> because like there's some shit that just doesn't make sense the way that they have it laid out and i realize 
Well, no, because they specifically ask when you order the harness. I was going to say maybe they're trying to make it to fit a variety of different intake configurations, but they're not because they specifically ask you uh, what it's for. So there's really no excuse to have stuff all, you know, where it shouldn't be. I mean, like they should know that this, uh, this uh, map sensor should be back here, right? Because I ordered a harness for, you know, a truck. Uh, truck setup so anywho back here is uh, our leg going back to our transmission with our two uh, VSS sensors you know our transmission plug I don't know if you can even see that on the camera and then we've got our cylinder head ground right here and our O2 sensor for the driver's side and over here as we go to the front we've got our fuel injectors for cylinders uh, seven five three and one on the driver's side then here we have our coolant temp sensor right here we have our plug for our, our uh, alternator and this is what's fixing to make me have to tear this whole freaking harness apart they ran the mass airflow wire all the way over here on the driver's side which makes no sense because again everyone knows on the truck intake setups the mass airflow sensor is on the passenger side and it's not just right here on the passenger side i mean it's like gonna be way over here most likely so there is a pretty good chance, unless I figure something out, there's a pretty damn good chance I'm not going to be able to stretch this all the way over to where I'm going to need it. So basically what I'm going to have to do is take all the tape off this PSI harness, and there is a fucking lot of tape on this PSI harness. So I'm going to have to take all that tape off. I'm going to have to pull all these, the wires for the mass airflow sensor. I'm going to have to pull those all the way back to here where the trunk splits and then run them all the way back up here and out here. Like, so this is the throttle body, uh, the throttle body plug. So my mass airflow wires are going to have to come out right here and tee off. And at that point, they're going to be way too fucking long, too. So I'm probably going to end up, like, folding them back and forth inside the harness. Uh, for 600 bucks, honestly, I'm just going to say it, guys. For $600, I expected a little more precision, I guess you would say, because, you know, I could have always built the harness. Of course, everybody says that. I could have just done that. But, I mean, I've built a couple of them at this point so it wouldn't have been a big deal to build another one but the whole point of getting this is you know ray wanted something that was brand new and was set up precisely for this application which now i'm in a situation where i'm gonna have to reset it up because it is not at all <laughs> set up precisely for this application so in order to keep wires from hanging out everywhere and shit and doing a bunch of janky shit yeah, I'm going to have to tear all this apart. And I'm not going to do this on camera, guys, because you guys don't want to watch that shit. Um, but since I have to tear all this apart anyway, I'm going to use that as an opportunity to make some things cleaner under the hood. Uh, as an example, I'm actually going to... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and run wires inside of this harness... And run it all the way through into the vehicle for um, uh, for my coolant temp sensor that's going to be over here on this side of the engine, the back of the cylinder head. Um, <clears throat> we're going to have a, a new wire for our oil pressure sending unit on the back of the engine. I'll go ahead and run that wire in here because because guys, I've got to peel all this tape off back to here anyway. So why wouldn't I do that? Uh, so I'll go ahead and run that. Uh, probably the trigger wire to go over here to the starter. Uh, guys, these are these are just ground wires, okay? So what we're also gonna, or not ground wires, but these are just power wires to power this harness 
off battery power and it's going to tie into the starter but what's going to happen is we're going to have another wire going from the starter over to the uh the fuse panel in the car to power the factory uh the factory fuses and everything in the car so what i'm probably going to do is since i'm tearing the harness apart back to here why not go a couple inches further and run that wire through the harness as well down with these two wires uh to clean that up i mean i'm just going to use it use it as an opportunity guys i mean to be honest when when i laid this out just now i was getting kind of irritated because i was like i'm seriously gonna have to tear this all down but i'm gonna use it as an opportunity you're gonna look at the positive and uh this is gonna be a way for me to make some extra wires under the hood a little more neat so i don't have to have like extra you know an extra loom running across the back of the engine there so that's what i'm going to do and uh i guess uh i'll just come back after i'm done with that so i know i told you guys i wasn't going to take you along for this ride but at this point i'm i'm starting to find some stuff in this psi harness that's not making me happy i was already not happy with you know <laughs> the location of this i mean there's like i don't know why uh, okay i've already been over that anyway uh while i have been peeling this harness back you know and cutting off just ton i've got a whole garbage bag full of tape already while i've been peeling this back to get my mass airflow harness out to run it back around this side um i have already came across one splice so far you see that i don't know if you guys can see that but uh that's a splice where they actually spliced in a length of wire there now uh let, let me tell you why that pisses me off okay the whole reason we bought a brand new harness is because i didn't want a harness full of splices you know i, I didn't want to have to elongate wires and shorten others and, and splice shit together. I mean, that was the whole point of buying a new harness. Guys, there's no excuse for that. I mean, if you're making a harness from scratch, you should be running full lengths of wire in that harness. You shouldn't be splicing pieces together. I mean, that's some, that's some fucking janky ass shit right there. Now, I'm running into a problem where I'm about to have another splice because this is the common ground that bolts to the back of the cylinder head and so what's going on now is i've got the uh, math sensor stripped back to this point i've still got to go as far as right here at the split in the trunk and at that point i'll be running it you know back up this side and hopefully have enough wire to do it but the problem is you know where they ran it down the wrong side and then they tied it into the ground so the ground wire is not going to be long enough to go all the way back and then come back up this side so at this at this point you know we've already got a splice and a power wire here but now it looks like i'm going to have to splice in a length of my own ground wire too to get it from here to at least back to here uh you know and then have enough wire to get around uh to the same length these wires are I'm, I'm really not happy guys i just wanted to show you guys that uh so so far i found one splice i'm i'm about to have to put another one in that's going to be my splice but um as i'm doing this you know i'm going to count the splices i find <laughs> because this is this is really I, I won't buy another harness from them and i actually just posted on the bad luck garage group page about you know finding the splices and the shit being run in places where it shouldn't be you know like this map sensor way up here and a foot long when it should be back here and about freaking six inches long um but uh yeah guys i'm i'm not happy with this uh i generally you guys know i generally don't buy new harnesses anyway generally what i do is is you know rework uh rework old harnesses but i you know i tried to go a different route this time because honestly the first swap i ever did 
I bought a reworked harness from a guy and it was total shit. It was just junk. And, uh, you know, seeing this just reaffirms to me why uh, I always tell people online, just, just do your own harnesses, guys. You know, you can't trust anybody to, to handle your shit nowadays. You just, you really can't. Nobody takes pride in their work anymore. So <laughs> if uh, I'm going back to my original suggestion that I've been telling you guys for years, even before I had this YouTube channel, I've been telling you guys on Facebook and shit. Just guys, it's not that hard to build your own harness. It is a lot easier to make your own harness than it is to have to fix a bunch of shit on a brand new harness you bought that's put together like garbage. That's, that's what I'm gonna say. So here we are two hours later and I have managed to untape and retape and pull this all the way around. So now our mass airflow sensor is on the correct side over here on the passenger side. Um, sorry guys, I'm extremely tired. It's almost one o'clock in the morning now. So yeah. Uh, so uh, instead of actually drilling a hole and starting to install this harness after work tonight, I had to do this instead. But uh, I have not taped up the end here yet because, you know, obviously I don't want all this wire hanging out. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably not going to tape this end until I get the harness installed and I see how long this needs to be. Um, I, I don't think it's going to have to be quite this long. So if it doesn't, then what I'll do is I'll end up folding this wire up inside the loom here before I tape it up so that it's not sticking out. If it does need to be that long, then I'll just, uh, you know, add some of this smaller loom to it and then tape it up here to finish off this end. You know, this was supposed to be the beginning of the video of me installing the harness, but instead it has turned into a freaking rant about how I'm really not happy with the quality of this harness. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna probably just post this video and you guys are gonna be like, damn dude, you're so fucking sour. Yes, I am because this harness cost a lot of money and usually you know i just make the harnesses so yeah you can see right there it says psi on there but yeah not happy with it guys this will uh, this has been my only my first and it will be my only dealing with psi so you can feel free to have your own opinion on the matter um oh and the thing i was going to tell you about the splices i found in the harness from here to here, I found a total of three splices, all of them in pink power wires. Um, so, you know, obviously when you get your harness, you can't tell they've spliced it together just by looking at it. You know, I wouldn't have known if I wouldn't have had to reroute my math sensor wire in here. But, uh, you know, if you do happen to take it apart, if you see a place inside the harness where there doesn't need to be tape yeah there's probably going to be a splice under it because that's what i found like you know they tape right before every split out like every branch there'll be tape before it but if you see tape like directly after the branch or something which there's no need for it to be there unroll that tape and uh, just about guarantee you'll find a splice because that's that's where i found all the splices in this one it was just, you know, that like there was, where was it? There was a splice here. I think there was a splice right back here. And then there was a splice right here in this harness. Uh, and again, all of them in power wires, but I just, uh, I just don't feel like, I don't feel like there should be splices in a brand new freaking harness guys. All right. Anyway, this has been a shitty video. I know that. You can tell me in the comments if you want how shitty it is. But uh, I just, uh, you know, it, I came home expecting to start on the harness install. And instead, I had to cut miles of tape and retape and, and relocate things. So uh, I'm pretty sour about it. And uh, you'll probably see this tomorrow because now I'm going to freaking bed because I have to go to work in the morning. But. 
hopefully tomorrow uh, I can actually do what I plan to do tonight and start installing this harness. Oh God. Hit it. Oh, kill it, Ray. Kill it. <laughs> Destroy all that nice Yeah, yeah. Tear that shit up. Ow. Big fucking hole into the firewall. Pretty freshly painted firewall was all pretty and well, Ray's like, I'm gonna drill a fucking hole in it. Hell yeah. <laughs> I like that. Alright, so I guess we are going to start pushing the harness through one fucking plug at a time. Which is gonna be a real pain in the ass. Like literally, what we're gonna have to do is start with the start with the longest wire first, and start. Actually, we should probably start with the fattest connectors first. Well, so like the transmission connector, yeah, shove right. it through first, because that's the biggest one. Right. The rest of them shouldn't be that big. Then the coil pipe connectors. Okay. Yeah, this is gonna be like a game of finesse. Well, I just bought that a two packet uh, Craftsman at Lowe's the other day. It's 14 bucks for that big one and a big round one. I said, grab that shit, Skylar. <laughs> he was with me. <laughs> it's when I was buying those insulated clamps. You want to paint this first? No. I don't think we're really going to worry about it as long as the covers it, yeah. Got it. You got some other wires to go with it? Got it. Got one, got two. You want me to pull some? Uh, yeah. Okay, there's, there's another one. Okay, I got it. got his spaghetti monster here. This is the part, this is the part where I tell Ray, hey buddy, I don't, I don't have any idea where any of this goes. <laughs> These go over here. That, yeah, that, that whole truck goes down with the starter. Right. That is your, um, that's the, the O2 sensor for the, that side. Yeah, yeah, that should be for the passenger side. That's a okay. crank sensor this side that whole thing i'm going to separate this this is this should be right there this should be the cam sensor i believe yeah because all this comes this way this is your transmission this whole truck goes down to the transmission that's both your vss sensors and your main transmission plug this all goes down here this guy plugs in right here to the cam sensor actually if I go ahead and start plugging some of this in it might help us out to kind of hold everything in place because we're going to end up pulling what we don't need back in yeah so this should be going to be going no further than that probably that should be the cam sensor. Yep. Like I said, this goes down to the transmission. You need to Wait, 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 wait. What's this? Oh, that's the wires I ran yesterday. Okay. So all this goes down here. That's all gonna go towards the back of the transmission. It's gonna all clean up here yeah. in a minute. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, this, should be for your knock sensors. And then this will actually, once we set the intake on, this is gonna clip on top of the intake manifold and hold it up here. Um, this is our ground that's going to attach to the back of this head. So 
we'll go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and hook this ground up. The reason I'm gonna go ahead and hook it up is because uh, it's really easy to forget once you get the intake manifold and everything on. It's uh, easy to forget to hook this ground up. <laughs> and obviously if you forget to hook this ground up, uh, you just, uh, it's not gonna start. <laughs> Okay, see, like this. Oh, where's that rubber piece? Yeah. This one goes over here. Yep. These are your coil. These plug into your coil harness. Just like that. And then, then this is your, all your fuel injectors are these bare wires here. And then this guy plugs into the back of the alternator right here. This guy plugs into your coolant temp sensor over here, which is your coolant temp sensor for your computer, not for your gauge. So he plugs in just like that. So, see, we're already whittling away at it. This is going to be for your mass airflow sensor over there. We're going to end up shortening that harness that's why i don't have it loomed. that's the piece i had to run from this side back around that's through right. the harness that i was telling you about so yeah so see everything is plugged in on this side now <coughs> what's that little wires go to these those are the fuel injectors okay so everything's right plugged in except for the fuel injectors over here where's this go uh that's for your throttle body your drive by wire throttle body so it's going to plug in like right here okay so just throw it over there to the side for now Shall we? This is your map sensor. It's actually going to come back around to the back. I, I bitched about this. <laughs> I'm like, why couldn't they have just run it out back here? Because it goes back here. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can see everything's already plugged up, right? Mm -hmm. This needs to go down behind your fuel line because that's all going down by the starter. Right. So it needs to go down through there. <clears throat> That's the, the main power wires for the harness and the crank sensor. The crank, crank sensor is right above the starter. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just. If you can see where I ran those other wires down there. I ran it on the back side of it. Fuel line. Yeah. Yeah, that's where it needs to be. All right, so that's down there. Now, what you got here, it should be an O2 wire. Yeah. You want it down there too? Yep. Same way? Uh, yeah, I would. What about these? Those I'm, I'm going to do something with. That's going to be your coolant temp sense, sensor and your oil pressure, which is going to be right here. So you're already hooked up, brother. Yeah. On the, out, on the engine side, except for the stuff that's hooked to the intake components, yeah. everything's plugged in. You're golden. And then we're gonna end up shoving this back to probably right there. It's gonna end up, yeah. It's gonna end up going back to like right here. Right. And then the rest of it will do a little lean too. Want to get it back there? Uh, yeah, just pull that plug all the way. That's pretty much how the conversation went. Everybody was telling me how great their PSI harnesses are, and I was like, yeah, really? Well, this one looks like a piece of shit to me. But I'm kind of OCD about my wiring, so. Okay, so that's cool. So I don't know, like I said, we might not have to use these two wires because we might have two over there that are gonna do the job. But uh, if we end up not using them, it's, I'll just pull them right through, it's not a big deal. And what I'll do right here is I'll probably end up some tape, tape. yeah, wrapping this real good with tape. Uh, originally this harness was taped all the way up to here, but I had to pull it off when I redid those wires in it. So. I, I chose not to tape it yet because I didn't know if these were going to stay or not. So <laughs> that's why that's like that. Those wires, it's in there. It's next to the rubber boot. Uh huh. There ain't no way we can get them on up to that, is there? Say what now? There ain't no way we can get them on up to that. Either. This? No, the other one. These? Yeah. Um. Well, I don't know. We kind of need to plug everything in and see how it's going to lay out first. Yeah, I'm just thinking about whenever you put the intake on it, it's going to be up against the intake. Yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. Well, I mean, that'd be all right. 
we'll, we'll get deal with that when we get there. We could. I mean, we could pull them up. Yeah. Let's push them inside there just like that. Yeah. And then we can shove more of it through the back through the firewall. Yeah, yeah. we'll do that. I think the next thing we're going to do. I put the oxygen sensors in. Is put the oxygen sensors in, and that way we and you can plug in the stuff to the transmission while you're under there. Yeah. That part of the harness. Yay. Yeah, I'm gonna have to tear the dash apart to start working on that template for for gauges. Unless we want to just spend the 70 bucks and buy that one that's already made. Well, 70 bucks would be easier, wouldn't it? Well, I mean, yeah, it'd be easier, but since when do we do shit the easy way? Well, <laughs> when we started buying new shit. Yeah, when we started buying new shit. Yeah, I'll, I'll admit, man, we did a lot of stuff on this car the easy way. Like, when you look at the shit I went through with Steppenwolf, Oh my gosh, we definitely did shit the easy way on this. Of course, I didn't have the money to do shit the easy way on that truck. Right. <laughs> that's, a, that's the thing, I mean, you know, you do shit out of necessity. I kind of laugh about it because it's become like kind of a fun, funny thing to do. Like people are, people are like rigging stuff up and doing shit like that and it's become like the cool thing to do is to fucking just rig shit up but I mean when yes. I do it it's because I have to <laughs> yeah well, we're rigging shit up but we're going to try to make it the best best we can right we're doing a good job I think we're doing excellent on this thing yeah I'm 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 pretty happy with it I'm just you know I've been frustrated with it the last couple yeah. weeks because stuff hadn't come together the way I wanted it to but but all in all man it's it's been it's been good um, yeah, like we could go ahead and put the intake on, bolt everything up, but see, we got to get that sensor back here. Yeah. And if the intake's here, it's going to be a pain in the ass. All right, on the sensor, it's going to be an electronic sensor, right? Yeah, electric. Yeah, we're okay. not going to be using... We don't have one? Huh? You don't have one? Uh, not that's probably the correct, correct ohms for whatever gauges we order. Like, they'll come with their own. Okay. Because different gauges use different ohms. So if we put the, a sensor in there that's not compatible, then it's not going to read right. This is probably a pretty boring video. It's mainly just me and Ray going back and forth. But uh, we got the harness ran through the firewall right here. So everything is hooked up. Uh, it, we went ahead and plugged everything in except for the intake and uh, fuel injector related stuff. So, you know, everything's plugged in. Harness is through the firewall. Now, what I've got to do is figure out where I'm going to put everything inside the car. So, Ray has decided, he said, you know, why don't you just mount everything in the glove box? So, he went ahead and pulled the insert out of the glove box, the little cardboard insert. And I guess what he's wanting to do is just go ahead and probably mount the PCM in here. And then, you know, our fuse block here we'll go ahead and mount it next to here probably have to make some kind of bracket for it and probably mount the obd2 plug right here so uh yeah you'll have access to everything through the glove box door so when the glove box is shut you won't see anything but when it's open you'll be able to check your fuses or plug a scanner in or do whatever so that's kind of what i'm going with guys all right, I want to make this as simple and sweet <laughs> as possible. So all I did was I took our bracket. This is actually the PCM mounting bracket out of a 90s S10. So I just simply took that bracket. It's a flat bracket. It's plastic. Go through the glove box here, and you can see I have secured it with self-tapping screws to the cow area. So this is behind the glove box door. The PCM will mount up there. The PCM, now it just, uh, it slides into the bracket like this, comes up, clips in. It's kind of hard to do with one hand, and I'm at an awkward angle, guys, but uh, it just goes into the bracket, clips in, and then this clip comes over. Let me get that attached. Like I said, kind of a pain in the butt to do with one hand, but 
uh, the PCM just goes in there. You can see it's nice and solid. And then you've got this additional clip that comes over, snaps in. PCM is not going anywhere. Uh, now I can just put the plugs into the blue and green slots in the bottom of the PCM. And this is the glove box door. If you look through here, you can see the PCM way in the back there. Guys, we're, we're trying to figure out where to put the tack module and the fuse block and everything. So you know how I like to play with sheet metal over here. Well, Ray does too. So Ray ended up making this, uh, this bracket here. If you look on the bottom, it's actually holding the tack module for the drive-by wire pedal. And then up here on the top, it's got our fuse block relays, and it is just going to mount inside the glove box here. So when you open the glove box, the fuses and relays will be right there. Little peak. Yep, there it is, guys. You can see the PCM over here, and then our relay blocks over there. And then here's the trunk for the uh, OBD2 connector. I'm probably going to run it across and put it on the driver's side. The uh, TAC module is plugged in over here. Um, so all of these wires now are going to go, well, most of them. There's some of the wires in this bundle that are not. But most of these wires are going to go back up in the dash and go over to the driver's side. And then this wire here, we have to hook to our... Uh, ignition uh while cranking hot while cranking source which if you guys remember when we pulled the engine out in that video i told you guys to label everything you took loose from the original engine so that's going to be our coil wire the wire that was powering the coil on our he uh, hei distributor that's going to tie into this wire now and uh it's going to energize this whole harness while cranking the engine so there you go guys you can see a little bit of bitching uh, but we did get the harness in. Uh, I've still got to make the connections to the gauges, to the fuel pumps, and things like that. But basically, uh, that's what it entails. Just getting the harness put in, run through the firewall, hooked up to power, all that. So again, I want to say I realize this probably wasn't the greatest video, but hopefully at least you guys got a sense of what's going on, kind of where we're at. I'm actually a little further than that. I'm... <laughs> As I'm editing this video, I'm actually working on some more stuff, working on another video. So anyway, if you did like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Thank you for watching. Now get out in the garage, get something done, and I'll see you next time here on Bad Luck Garage.